I'm Jim Becca. In 1983, the Texas legislature passed a law calling for the modernization of EMS in Texas. And that's what a lot of other states were doing. I was one of the guys that was hired by the state of Texas to try and set up the system in the Houston area. Now, it was really quite a formidable task back then because, believe it or not, it was almost possible to get a wheelbarrow permitted as an ambulance if you were willing to buy lights and siren for it and a traction splint. But things have changed. We're going to look at what EMS has become since the early days when funeral homes did double duty, alternating between administering patient care and transporting bodies and flowers. This video is based on National EMT Basic Standards and is intended for EMT students. At the end of the video, there's a short quiz, so pay attention and look for the link. EMT Basic is one of four levels of EMS certification nationwide, and they're tested primarily by the National Registry of EMTs. You have First Responder, or ECA in some states, EMT Basic, EMT Intermediate, and EMT Paramedic. Texas has a paramedic license for paramedics with college degrees. I helped set up the licensing of paramedics in Texas. We will define what emergency medical systems are, differentiate the roles and responsibilities of the EMT basic from other pre-hospital care providers, describe the roles and responsibilities related to personal safety, and discuss the roles and responsibilities of the EMT basic towards the safety of the crew, the patient, and bystanders. When you drive across the country, you drive through different jurisdictions of EMS systems. Emergency Medical Services, or EMS, is an entity that provides personnel, facilities, and equipment, and medical care. You have dispatch centers where calls can come from the public and information is sent to ambulance crews. When I began an EMS 30 years ago, EMTs were often thrown into dispatch centers without training. Now there are certifications for dispatchers that require specific training. Fire departments and police departments must work with ambulance crews and dispatchers to ensure that scenes are safe. EMS systems also have special hospitals for particular injuries. In Houston, patients with massive trauma from a motor vehicle accident usually end up at Ben Taub Trauma Center where surgeons are on hand waiting for trauma patients. If you merely take a trauma patient to the closest hospital, surgical staff may not be available to administer care. You have to call them in. Remember, definitive care for trauma is surgery, and you must have all staff on hand for the surgery as soon as possible, within the golden hour from the onset of the injury. EMS systems also consist of first responders, volunteers, public education, EMS research, and legislators to address a variety of problems. Physician medical directors have an important role in helping set up protocols and standing orders for EMTs and paramedics. Standing orders are procedures laid out for ambulance crews to be performed in the field in an emergency without having to contact the receiving hospital. If you have a patient seconds away from death, would you want to be put in a position of having to contact a hospital in order to receive an order to begin care? Well, ambulance crews initiate care under standing orders and protocols outline patient care procedures. What steps should be taken with a particular problem? I was one of the first paid paramedics for the city of South Houston and worked with many EMT basics. They had specific duties they performed. Like triaging patients and prioritizing care, more serious patients were handled first. Patient assessment, stabilization, all part of triage. Spinal injury treatment, burn management, emergency birth assistance, CPR, which is an important skill, controlling bleeding, broken bones, handling medical emergencies, and using automatic external defibrillators. A major duty of EMTs is to ensure a scene is safe. 
Hazardous materials may be spilled, and who will need to be called to handle these spills? The EMT must size up the scene and communicate needs with the dispatch center. Chemtrek is a private service that provides information about the specific chemicals being transported on roadways. ATSDR is the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry. It provides toxicology information for hazmat guidance. CDC, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, provides information related to biological and disease hazards. And the poison control centers are available in different communities to provide quick information on toxicity and poison treatments. Remember, personal safety is a major priority for the EMT. Don't go into a dangerous scene.